the first ever UFC women's title fight happened at UFC 157 back in 2013. It was Ronda Rousey against Liz Carmouche. Liz Carmouche, in fact, was the very first female fighter to step foot in a UFC octagon, Anaheim, California, February. You recall one of the great moments in the history of this sport. Well, unfortunately, her UFC run has come to an end. She found out on Friday while in Washington, D.C., doing promotional work for the UFC. Her management, I'm told, found out on Thursday. They informed her on Friday. And now she is no longer a part of the UFC. She was released from the company and is a free agent. She's kind enough to join us on the show to talk about that. There she is, Liz Carmouche in the house. Liz, how are you? Good, how are you? How, how have the last three or so days been like for you with all the hoopla surrounding this news? Uh, it's been interesting. I have uh, a lot of people from the UFC. I mean, like you said, I was out there in Washington, D.C., so I had a lot of the people that work for the UFC come up to me and just express their embarrassment and their surprise at everything that occurred and apologize. And I just had to keep reassuring them, like, you guys didn't do anything. I have no, no hard feelings against you. Um, so that, that's been interesting just to have so many differences. It seems like the communication between the head and the body were cut off. And I just experienced that firsthand. Could you tell us where you were exactly when you found out this news and, and then afterwards what your reaction was? Uh, yeah, I was in actually in the car with Reed Harris and a few of the other fighters. We'd just come back from a hospital and uh, a children's ward talking to some kids who were going through different treatment. And then some adults were going through chemotherapy. And we just returned from doing this. We had all the high ups from the hospitals just express how grateful they were and how much we made a difference going out there. And we're on the drive back, about to go get food, and my management calls. And I'm like, well, that can't be a good thing if I'm in the car. Maybe a good thing. Uh, and uh, so I just had to just save face because, like I said, it wasn't for anybody that was in the vehicle. They didn't do anything wrong. It was, it was nothing on their part. So the last thing I want to do is be upset or lash out towards them. So I just had to kind of be like, all right, well, this is going to be a very weird drive back, but I'm just going to have to endure it and get through. And I uh, didn't even tell anything to anybody in the vehicle because I just didn't know where we were at with things. And so, of course, Reed and, and multiple other people were even more surprised when they get back and be like, why didn't you tell us? I'm like, oh, I, this is news to me, too. <laughs> Wow. And, and what was the reason that you were given, or at least that your management was given and then relayed to you? Uh, so since I've been with the organization, especially over the last few years, I've had a lot of difficulty getting fights. And it's not because of injury. It's not for lack of readiness and, and preparation going into the fight. It's because it seems like all the opponents that I've been offered have turned down all the fights. And I mean, the frequency that I prefer is to do like four fights a year, three fights, however many I possibly can, and constantly... We were just told that everybody was saying no. And the reason that they gave is that they're really trying to build up the division. And every person, every female that they brought in to the 125 division, I've been able to beat them. So it's not really giving them the opportunity to build up the division that they wanted to. So unfortunately, for the best well-being of the division, they had to cut me to give me an opportunity to go elsewhere and get the fights I need. Is that a hard pill to swallow? I mean, you're doing your job, you're tough, and you're being told. It reminds me, actually, of John Fitch, Yushin Okami, Jake Shields, guys who are highly ranked. You're in the top five, I believe, top four, last I checked, and you're being told that you're almost too good, like you're, you're being a roadblock, right, for other up-and-comers, and so they have to get rid of you. Is that, is that tough to digest? Uh, you know, you would think it is, but at the same time, what that tells me is that they're so scared of me that they can't do anything about it. I mean... It'd be worse if they're like, oh, you're just not good enough. Sorry, we're going to have to cut you instead of all the females are afraid of me. I'd much rather have it fear for them than it be that I just wasn't skilled enough or had made a mistake that cost it instead of it just really that nobody wants to face me because they feel like even in if they won the fight, it's still going to come at the cost of them potentially going to the hospital and need to take time off. I'd much rather that occur than the other. <laughs> Did you have any inclination after that fight against Valentina Shevchenko in August that that might be your last UFC fight. Did that thought ever cross your mind? Oh, uh, absolutely. And it even crossed my mind before the Valentina fight. It just seemed like more and more that I would ask them for opportunities to fight. And they just kept turning it down and saying that they just couldn't set anything up for me. And then particularly after this, I had, I had said like, please, you know, I finally got two fights in a year. Can I make it three? I just, I want to fight. I'm healthy. I want to get back in there. And, uh, they said that I was on standby potentially for the end of the year for a fight. And then all these organizations for jiu-jitsu hit me up about super fights, quintets, and paying opportunities. And I'd ask the UFC, and they said, no, you're still on standby. Yeah. And that to me was a little bit odd, being that here we come to the end of the year, and I haven't been offered a fight. So I just kind of had an inkling that it might be going this way. 
And and so I wonder if that is a hard. I mean, your fight, your last fight was four months ago. Why did it take so long to make the decision? Nothing has happened in your career since August. Why sit on it for so long? Yeah, and that's honestly the hardest part is because these jiu-jitsu opportunities are coming up and I'm all about challenging myself and just staying as active as possible. So that alone meant that I'm just sitting on the shelf for four months, which is really difficult because that's not what I want to do. And then if you think of it in retrospective, it's, hey, it's the end of the year and I'm trying to provide for my family. And these were also paying opportunities for jiu-jitsu. That's where it's really difficult because I shut down five different offers, all of which were paying substantially that would have allowed me to, to put more food on the table and to spoil my son for his birthday and for Christmas, and I had to turn those down. That's the hardest part to swallow. After this news came out and, and the reaction to the news, I'm wondering, did anyone, you know, any decision maker, if you will, from the UFC call you? Dana White, Hunter Campbell, Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby. Did anyone reach out to you personally and explain why they're doing this? No, nobody said anything to me. Uh, really, it was people like Reed Harris and uh, Susie with the UFC, people like that that just approached me and just expressed their surprise at it and apologize for how it went down but as far as like the executives of the oc nobody had reached out now does that hurt you yes and no i mean there's been a lot of change of, of ownership and change of hands so in a lot of ways i'm not surprised and I, I think of it as like a breakup you want to try and do it as easy as possible for the person that's breaking up and that's kind of how i look at it is they just didn't really want to face it so it's easier to kind of have my management do it for them did you continue with the promotional work in D.C. after you found out? Was there anything left to do? Uh, there's nothing left to do except go to the fights. And the reality being is that I, I made new friends out there with the fighters there and got to hear about their teammates. And I want to go out and support them and see them put on a show. And regardless of how it went down, I was looking at it like, hey, I came out here to do a job. And yes, it took me away from my actual paying job for a week and away from uh, birthday activities for my son. But I came out here to support the fighters and to see them put on the best show that they can. And I'm, I'm not the person that's just going to tuck my tail and walk away. So I went out there just to do a last one and, and enjoy it for myself. And what is that paying job that you're referring to? Uh, so I'm a personal trainer, and then I also teach uh, classes like Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. And so that meant for a week I had to call into my job and say, I'm not going to be training. I'm not going to be teaching. And uh, just suck it up to go out to this event. <laughs> wow. And, and it was your son's birthday this week, this past weekend as well? Uh, no, his birthday is on the 22nd, but okay. we had months ago planned out going up to Knott's Berry Farm and doing this big celebration for him uh, because all of us were able to have that time off. And then with the UFC not, not offering him anything, we'd scheduled that. And I had to tell them to all go without me and miss out on his birthday party. And so was it, who reached out to you to do this promotional work? Was it the UFC? Yes. Okay. And did you, because uh, I, I saw uh, an article on MMA Junkie, did you pay for your travel to DC? Is that, is that common for this type of stuff? Oh no, they paid for the travel. I just had to take off from work for a week and that's okay. where the cost came in. Gotcha. Especially like this with being my son's birthday and being this close to holidays. The last thing I want to do is in the month of December or November to take off any time from work to not be able to provide what I want to. Okay. So, but they did pay, they did. Cause I think there was some confusion. They paid you to go over there. You didn't have to pay out of pocket to be there. Correct. You just lost so out paid on for the travel in the hotel. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And do you, do you, do you, do you just get paid for your travel? You don't get like a stipend or something for the appearance or anything like that. Yeah, correct. All it is, is just the, the hotel and plane ride. Understood. Okay. Um, do you want to keep fighting? Oh, absolutely. I'm not done. Um, I mean, with every fight, I just feel like I'm making more improvements. I'm seeing within myself more growth mentally and physically. And I've been working with so many different teams now. And there are just so many things I wanted to show in my game that I've been working on that I'm in no way done. I see your, your teammate and good friend and the Bellator champion in the same weight class, 125, Ali Miller McFarland, campaigning for Bellator to sign you. Would you like to go to Bellator? Are they at the top of that list? She's even said that her dream fight is against you out of total respect, which I'm sure you know and you've talked about. Is that a place where you would like to end up? Oh, absolutely. Especially because when I was in Strike Force, I got to know Scott Croker and I got to know Richard Chu. And I had nothing but good relationships when the UFC bought Strike Force out and they ultimately went to Bellator. So that would be a perfect fit because I already know them and I have a good relationship with them. On top of, I have my teammate that's leading in that division and has the belt. And we talked about it for years that a great fight for both of us would be each other because we're main training partners. We know our weaknesses and our strengths, we know how to put on a good show. And we feel like for both of us, that would just be a really good fit 
but I mean, there's also great organizations out there too, but ultimately, yeah, Bellator's at the top of the list and I would love to go fight for them. Have any promotions, including Bellator, reached out to you or your management since this news came out? Uh, yeah, the great thing is, is all of them are reached out. So it's really nice. just a matter of finding the best relationship that's going to be a fit and the fight frequency too, because I, the last thing I want to do is go to an organization where I'm only going to fight once a year. I mean, that's the position I was in with the UFC, and it ultimately wasn't making me happy. I want to fight as often as possible, so I'm trying to find the organization that's going to fit into that lifestyle. Are you close to agreeing to a new deal? Oh, uh, there's definitely offers on the table. We want to, like I said, weigh the best decision possible and what makes sense for my career before we decide on something. And by the way, this idea of fighting Alima, like, would you both train at the same gym as you prepare? Like, have you actually talked this out? Because it's very rare to have two teammates openly talk about how exciting the idea of, uh, of fighting each other is. It doesn't happen often. Yeah, all the time. We're, we're our go-to training partners. I mean, we both participate in Underwater Torpedo League, and we're the main people that are thrashing out. We're always on opposite teams competing against each other. In the gym, when it comes to somebody being in fight camp, and we know that, like, oh, we don't have enough. It's a holiday, so there's not a lot of training partners. We're the go-to people that we give each other a call, like, hey, I'll be down at the gym right away, whether it's we're doing strength and conditioning or striking practice, grappling practice, no matter what, we're always our main training partners. And going back to your last fight, is there any part of you that thinks if that fight was maybe a little more exciting that you would have been kept? Do you feel like this is maybe, you know, in response to how that fight played out and the criticism afterwards? I definitely suspected because of the way that the fight went that that would ultimately be the reason I got cut. But after hearing how the discussions that went on between the UFC and my management, that's in no way what it was at all. Uh, so that's a little bit reassuring knowing that that just leaves more room for growth in the future of my fighting. Do you, do you leave the UFC with any regrets? Uh, just that I didn't take that belt for some Chaco. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe even more so the Ronda one. You were very close to finishing her. How crazy would, you know, like the entire history of the sport would be different had that fight gone a little differently, right? Oh, absolutely. It would be a completely different sport. And I think that um, had I won the belt against Ronda in the initial fight for women into the UFC, that I would have probably been able to, to push to get 125 moves even earlier into the divisions mm. than had to have waited a few years to do it. Do you, do you think about that fight a lot? Uh, only when it's brought up. Okay. I mean, I really have passed it. It was, it, was, it was such an important thing for me for the first two years after it occurred because it motivated, motivated me that much more to work on my training and to grow and evolve. But since then, I feel like I'm not even close to the same fighter that I was. So I've let that person go, and I just look towards the future. How soon are you hoping to sign with someone? Uh, the sooner, the better. I mean, like I said, I want to fight as frequently as possible. So the sooner that I get signed, uh, the guarantee is to, to be able to fight soon after that. And, you know, you hear from some people who say, I leave the UFC. I want to eventually come back. Is that part of the mindset as well? Or are you closing the door on that chapter in your life? I mean, uh, if I can, of course, like you want to fight against the best in the world and to, to challenge yourself. And if, you know, I make a great run with a different organization, the UFC calls me back, there's always going to be that thought. But at the same time, the unprofessionalism and the way that they released me makes me wonder, like, are, how good of, are they going to treat me if I were to go back? Or is this just potentially something that's going to happen again? So I think that I'll, I'll finish out my career with an organization that I can have a really good relationship that's going to treat me well, and ultimately I can give back to them. Liz, I appreciate you doing this very much. I'm sorry to hear this news. I'm sorry to hear how it played out, especially, but I know that there are a lot of people interested in your services. I have a feeling that you will not be a free agent for a very long time. So good luck to you, and uh, congrats on a great run in the UFC. You are one of the pioneers of this sport, and uh, I hope you know that and, and are receiving a lot of love for that, and I think it's a great thing to see. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk to you soon. There she is, Liz Carmouche, one half of the very first fight in UFC women's MMA history, the very first female fighter to step foot in a UFC cage prior to that fight at UFC 157 against Ronda Rousey. If you've never seen the fight, she was that close to submitting Ronda. Uh, Ronda got out and uh, eventually submitted her, but uh, just unfortunate to see how it played out uh, over the past week with her release while being in Washington for that promotional work. Unfortunate stuff, but again, I have a feeling that she's not going to be out of a job for a very long time. I appreciate her doing that and her management team as well. 
Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.